are you constantly struggling with cash flow? Always wondering when the next job is coming in, when you can send that next invoice. I struggled a lot with this in the early days of my business. It wasn't until I was encouraged to focus on making recurring bookings that things started to really change in my business. I found myself sitting next to me with a pile of bills to pay and no invoices to send out. I was struggling, I was stressed. I never knew when my next job was coming. I knew something would come in, but I never knew when and I never knew how much work I would actually have. So one of my clients was also my business mentor. So they knew about my business and what it was. And they suggested that I try and focus on recurring bookings. I ensure that I know what is coming up next week, next month, and maybe even next year. So I can really start planning and I know that that cash flow is going to keep coming in. I can get rid of all those bills and I can feel confident in myself and my business. So today I want to talk to you about how I implemented recurring bookings, some different types of recurring bookings that you might use, and also how you can get started. So when my client told me, Abby, go back and start mapping out a plan to get some recurring bookings, I really only had one grocery shop, a Friday grocery shop. And amazingly, almost 20 years later, we're still doing that grocery shop. Not me, but we still do that Friday grocery shop. So I only had that booking, but I had other things that I could potentially turn into recurring bookings like dry cleaning, like car servicing, a whole different lot of things that I could start implementing and recommending to my customer. Up until that point, I had just been doing things ad hoc. Clients would email me with an errand to run, with something to research, with a job to do, and I would just go and do it. And especially at the start of my business, I, I mean, I didn't have that much to do. I didn't have heaps of jobs and heaps of clients. So when they emailed me, of course, yep, yeah, I'm free. I'll do that. I can do that today. And that was good. But when things start to get busier and you have to worry about cash flow as well as your availability, that's when recurring bookings start to make sense because you can plan, you can plan your time and you can plan your money. So I feel that focusing on recurring bookings and one or more of the four models that I'm going to share with you, I feel that it really can change the way that you do business and make you feel like you know what you're doing because often when the cash flow isn't happening and you're constantly feeling unsure about where your next job's coming from, that's what makes you feel unsure about whether you even know what you're doing. So I'm going to go through four different models of recurring income that I think you should consider. So they are subscriptions, retainers, memberships, and then just recurring bookings and setting those in. So I know you're probably thinking, Abby, is there a real difference between a subscription and a retainer and a membership? To one degree, no, there isn't, but I believe there are distinct differences between the four models that makes them unique and means that you need to really think about what model is going to work for your business now and also in the future. So subscriptions back in the day weren't all that common when I was starting and trying to work out my recurring model. But these days they're quite common. There's software subscription, there's Netflix subscription back in the day and maybe now there was magazine subscriptions. And what makes these the same or similar is that they are very specific. They You get a very specific product or service at a very specific time for a very specific amount. So you know that when you are on a software subscription, you are getting X, Y, Z for this software and you're paying this set amount at the exact time every month. So in our business as a service business, this doesn't offer quite as much flexibility as we like, but depending on what your business is, there would possibly be uh, many different subscriptions that you could potentially offer to your clients. Now, I'm not saying offer lots of them, potentially offer one, maybe two, but you could think about the fact that 
I don't, maybe you are managing someone's social media and you upload X number of posts each week for X dollars. It's very specific what you're doing and how much and when. So that's what you need to think about when you're looking at a subscription model. The next model is a retainer and this is one of the recurring booking models that we use in our business. So a retainer can be thought of as a set amount of money that someone pays per month and in that time period they get up to a certain amount of hours of service of product. Lawyers, accountants, PR firms often use the retainer model. It's familiar to a lot of professionals. And so in our business with a retainer, we say that if you pay X dollars a month, you will get up to this many hours of service. And we could also categorize it so there's only a narrow field of services that they can get for that retainer, or it might be a broad range of services that they get for that set price. But there's a bit more flexibility in what we can do and when we can do it within that month. But we know that we're always getting paid this set amount each month. With a retainer, there is a maximum that you will do, um, but they may or may not use all of that service, product, time, whatever it is that you set in stone. Then there is the membership model. And I'm hearing many of you go, Abby, what's the difference between a membership and a subscription? Or what's the difference between a membership and a retainer? So what I feel is that a membership is a variation on a subscription or a retainer, but you're combining a more community element to it. You're combining a community VIP specialist member service to this recurring pricing model. So people might get some special VIP discounts, they might get better access to you personally. There might be an online community that you have. They might get invited to exclusive events. So a membership can be like a subscription, like a retainer, but they get some added benefits to that. And that often means that you can charge more for your membership because they're getting extra above and beyond but it also may mean that you don't have to outlay as much time or effort for that extra money that you're charging for the membership model. And then there is just regular booking. So we use this a lot in our business as well. We have clients buy 10, 20 or 50 hour packages and they can use that anytime in 12 months. I do say that they usually always use them well within the 12 months, but it gives them some sort of comfort to know that they can use those hours when they like. But what we do to turn that into a, a recurring booking model is that they have to lock in certain things that they want. The regular grocery shop that I've mentioned, the regular dry cleaning pickup, a regular visit to their house, whatever it might be. The reason this works for our business is because it offers more flexibility. So we know that we are getting a regular grocery shop every week, but that grocery shop may take 45 minutes one week, it might take an hour and a half next week. So there's flexibility in the time that our clients are using our services, we can just then deduct that money from their hourly packages that they've purchased, our clients know that they can use us for what they need on that particular day. Um, but we know that generally we'd be getting at least 45 minutes every week, but that could increase depending on the grocery shop, for example, that they want that week. So for us in our business, a combination of the retainer model and also the recurring booking um, model with our hourly packages is what works really well for us and our business. Now there are some things to think about when you're deciding which model works for you and how you structure that. So one that you may be thinking of is, Abby, with a retainer, with a membership, do I roll over the hours? So if someone has bought 10 hours a month and they only use two hours, what happens to that eight hours? Now, generally for PR firms, for accountants, for lawyers, that's it. If you don't use it, you lose it. And that's a fair enough option that you might choose to offer in your business. 
For us, we allow the client to roll over the immediate month prior. So they can roll over that eight hours, but if they don't use that particular eight hours, they don't get that in the next month. So it's only the hours from the immediate month prior that can roll over. That way we don't end up at the end of the year, a client has like 50 hours and they want to use all of them the week before Christmas. You know, it gives us some flexibility and some buffer and it means that we know exactly what we are going to be doing for a client and at the most if they have a 10 hour package at the most in one month they'll be using 20 hours if for some reason they used absolutely absolutely no hours the previous month so think about rollover and if that's going to be something you offer. The other thing to think about is what can they expect in terms of your availability? So if they're on a subscription or a membership or whatever it is, can they expect that they will have immediate access to you? Can they pick up the phone and ask you to do an urgent errand for them? Do they have to give you 48 hours notice? Do they have to give you a week's notice? What is your availability like? And one benefit of thinking about this in terms of your membership is it might be that you have different tiers of membership and the higher, more expensive membership means that they can be almost guaranteed immediate access to you. But if they've got a lower level membership, they need to ensure that they've booked in with you at least you know, a fortnight or month in advance. It could be any of those options, whatever you choose, but that's where that VIP higher level membership option could work really well because people may want to know that they can access you as they like, but really they don't take that up very often. So it could be a way of making a little bit extra money for you and your business. The other question you'll want to answer, and it's once again, it's gotta be right for you, is what happens if a client cancels? Do they have to give you a certain amount of notice? Will they get a refund of any sort? Um, how will that carry over to the next week, the next month? How will you handle cancellations? And it needs to be simple and clear for the client. And that's why I've given you these things to think about because when you're setting up your recurring model, you need to ensure that you're communicating all of this really clearly to your clients so that if something goes wrong or something changes or something out of the ordinary happens, how are you going to deal with it? What will be your response to their questions about availability, about cancellation, etc. So when I changed to the recurring booking model, it really changed my business. I felt less stressed. I knew what was happening. I knew what money was coming in. I was on top of the bills for the most part. And I could start planning for the future. I could think about the week, month, and even year in advance because I knew what was coming in. I could plan for if clients decided to cancel, what would that do? What did I need to have in place in my business to have a buffer for that? All of that planning and that, you know, feeling more secure in my business, that all started to flow. So what recurring booking model is right for you? And of course, I'm going to say it's up to you exactly what works for you and what works for your business. What I will say is nothing is set in stone. So you might start with a subscription model and move on to a membership model. You start, might start with the regular booking model and move on to a retainer. You could offer more than one of these options. It needs to work for you. But what I will say is you don't know until you start trying. So don't try and plan and map out everything to the nth degree. What I suggest is start trying one of the models, see what works, find out how your customers respond, see how you might evolve or adjust or change. Just start, try it out and see what works. Everyone's business is different, but I do believe that some way you will be able to implement some form of recurring booking, recurring income model into your business to make things flow a lot more for you, be a lot less stressful, and you can start planning for the future. If you'd like to know more about how we set up our pricing model in our business, I suggest that you click this next video where I share behind the scenes what we do in our business with our clients.